Okay, what we're doing today is what all beekeepers dream about, the honey. So I got a bucket here and a toad stabber to cut the comb out of, and we're gonna go up there and if we got some honey up here in the hive, we're gonna take it out. This is in Studio City, it's bee paradise. It's perfect. The one hive's a little twitchier than the other, so I'm just gonna make sure I'm all prepared because I don't like stepping and fetching if I'm not covered up good. We do it backwards here. We don't take the box off, get the bees out, carry it down the truck, carry it home, get honey all over the house and spin it in a spinner. We just cut the comb out and then we go crush and strain it. Well, I try not to make any, you know, popping sounds. That, you know, sometimes when you open the lid, it goes pop. Yeah, they got their hind ends up, so we're gonna give them a little puffy puff. When you smoke them, it makes them want to eat honey. And when they eat honey, they're more docile. You know, it's like eating a Thanksgiving dinner and then wanting to have a fist fight. It just doesn't work very good. Oh, he got me. These bees, you'll notice, they're not what's called hot. They're not flying all over, trying to get you. They're, they're not mean. Some people say all wild bees are mean. They're Africanized. Well, I don't think that's true. Now this one we're going to extract this one here first. This other one's got some drone brood in it. I'm first going to shake the bees off in front of the hive so they can go back in and then I'll brush some off. I leave about a three quarter of an inch roll of cells and honey on the top of the frame so the bees can use that for a starter strip to draw comb again because we let them draw their own natural comb. Okay, now I put the top on so it keeps the bees out. Okay, that's how you do it. Just take the frame out, shake the bees off, brush them off if you got a bee brush, cut the comb out, let it drop in the bucket, put the frame back in the box. That's my phone, it always rings when I'm in the middle of a beehive. Okay, now we're gonna check these guys. Okay, so you'll notice when I go through this hive here, I kind of made a mistake. I didn't smoke them like I did the previous hive. Oh, look at that. Look at that nice dark honey. Okay. And you'll notice these bees are a bit more twitchy and more aggressive. Now you'll notice these guys are pretty mad now. Ow. If I'd have taken a little bit more time and smoked them, waited five or ten minutes, smoked them again, it probably would have went a lot better. But I was kind of jammed up for time that day. You might want to go out. So it really wasn't the bees' fault that they were a little aggressive. They just had this big fat homo sapien come up there, smoke a little bit, tear their house apart, take the honey out and remove it. That would piss off most people. Look at all that beautiful honey. And I know people that would see this video and think that the bees needed to be destroyed, but for me, they're not too mean to manage. So if you take your time, you have good technique, you have the right clothes on, you're covered up, you don't have to have them mad like this. See, I got stung right through the gloves, see there? My problem is, is my hands are big. So even when I get big gloves, they fit tight. That's how they sting you. I gotta sew up the holes in my bee suit and I have to get me some new gloves. <laughs> okay, now you notice you get your honey home. Now you take the top off and there's always a few bees in there. So what I do is I just take a paper towel and reach in and grab them and pull them out. That way they won't be in the honey. This is an angle scraper with a sharp edge on it. It screws on a pole. I like this because it only takes about five minutes to crush this comb and I don't have to plug it in. I'll know when I'm done because I can go around and I won't feel like going through any chunks. It'll go through quite easily. Okay, it's really starting to look good now. This is the bucket with a honey gate on it. You open it up so that it pours into the bottles. 
This is a five gallon paint strainer from the paint store. This is what the honey is going to go through. So you'll take one bucket and drill a bunch of little half inch holes in there. The honey's going to drip through that and drip down into the first bucket there that's got this drainer and the honey gate on it. We've got three buckets. The honey, one with the honey gate so we can take the honey out and put it in these jars. We have the lid with the hole cut through it so that the other bucket will sit on it. We have the bucket with the holes that we put here. And then we've got the honey. Now, this is when it gets good because we're almost there now. The next thing you have to do is, is one of the most difficult things you can do in California. Wait for gravity to do its thing. Now I usually just go and put a top on it and just leave it until the next morning. And let it just drip through. This is what we're going to do for the taste test. It's an actual sin to extract honey and not taste them. This is made by bees that were just left to be bees. And you know what? You can taste the difference. Unbelievable. Yum, 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 yum! Has a nice floral bouquet and leaves a nice finish on the palate. <laughs> Backwards is the new forwards. <laughs>